Hello YouTube, welcome to the VIP series, and today we're going to be hopping into the Void campaign to squeeze out some more progress. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and finish this week's event. Has been really uneventful for most people. Generally, it's just been Imp's Adventure and Do Nothing, which is very typical for a quiet week like this one. But we need to do our shelter mission, so we're going to go ahead and put our four stars in here and get our reward heroes. So we'll start off with the Home Jung. We have him. We're putting our bone carvers. That's going to be for Azrael. We'll slap down someone who's food, like a lamb. That is absolutely fine. For Freya, we're going to go put in our Windwalker copies. Nice and easy. Get our five-star chief right there. Lovely stuff. And then finally, we've got ourselves a Rainier with these four Normas. And we'll throw down Tanner. And that's going to be all of the dice for this week's Sims Adventure. So, I could smash... But whenever I smash, I get unlucky and my huts don't get leveled up. That's because the smash is not perfect. So I'm going to do it manually so it goes as well as possible. Now I'm praying this goes well. We've already upgraded a hut here. That's fantastic. The ideal is that we get our huts upgraded and then I'm just happy to smash thereafter. If I get a one here, that's good. If I get a three, that's also fine. I got neither of those things. So we just move on, wait for our next pass. Now here we go, four or six. Six. Good. Now we have our lucky dice. Things are going to get easier. We want four to get to that story mushroom hut. We get it. So that's two level three huts. And now we've just got the corner to deal with. Now, here's a problem. If you just keep pressing smash, the game will actually actively avoid this corner because it will keep using the lucky dice to skip it. Whereas what we want is that corner unlocked. So we're not going to try and skip it at all. We're actually going to want to land on it. So here is the only exception to that rule because I don't want to risk landing on the karma hut. And six on a lucky dice is such huge progress. Any other opportunity, though, we will just roll ordinary dice and hope we land in the corner. We have to risk it for better progress and more rewards. So roll some more dice. What do we get there? That's a karma hut. That's not good. Two moves us forwards. Now, here we got a one or a three for something that we like. We got a five. We didn't get it, but that's absolutely fine. So we roll our ordinary dice. Keep on moving around. And this is basically the general technique you guys want to do. We got a power-up card. Now, if this hits that lucky hut in the corner, we are so fortunate. It didn't, but it would have been so good if it did. <laughs> right, what do we get here? Three. Mm. So now again, I need a two or a four. We get the four. Great. So that lucky dice we can use to land on that hut in the corner. So this is absolutely fantastic. So we'll roll here until we get close to it. Although it seems with these low rolls... That's not going to happen. Right, now here we go. We need a lucky dice of one, two, three, four to get us there. So we'll roll it. Hits that corner. And then we lucky dice for two because it just gets us our lucky dice back. That's great. And now we go back to ordinary dice. Let's move around. Hit that three. Get the lucky card. Really nice. So we can double our lucky dice to ten, which takes us around the whole board. Gets that lucky dice back. That was as good of a roll as we could have gotten. A one there gets us our ordinary dice back. Hit a five. Hit a blight card. That devalues our spirit. And we're at 111. Honestly, I always find it questionable whether it's ever worth it at this point. Because we could go ahead and buy the relay just to go and get some gems, cores, treasure train stuff. But I need to ask myself if that's actually worth the investment. Because my treasure train currently, what are we on and when does this end? That is a question we need to ask ourselves. It ends in 24 hours. And we're at pretty much almost 100. Now, I think I'm not going to get 50 treasure train coupons in that time. So the best thing for me to do is just save all my treasure train stuff and just wait. Absolutely wait. Don't worry about it. Who cares? July is so soon. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, it already is July. So I'm just going to save stuff until we get to 150. Skip that. Boring. Don't need to do it. And that means I'm actually not going to buy the relay here, even if that does get me double rewards in this adventure, because actually I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need it. That treasure train stuff, I don't think is enough to justify the purchase. But this first little node, I think is. So I'll buy this for five bucks, get that free reward, and I'm calling it there. All right, there we go. That was pretty clean. So we'll claim this free reward. That's going to be four treasure train tickets to use next month to get to 150. And I'm not buying anything else. Five dollars got me four. So you're going to tell me another, what, 17 is going to get me four more? That is not good value. I'll leave that. And then you could say, yeah, but you're getting 10 cores. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a fair argument, but I'm good. I don't need those cores. We get cores anyway. 
Not going to spend money on them. So let's go back to Imp's Adventure. We got these six dice now from the extra dice we managed. And now we're going to look at dice for... Ooh, do I look at dice for six? Yeah, I absolutely do. Just good progress. Let's see how much further we can get. Still haven't used gems to buy dice, which is kind of a good thing. So keep on going. Roll a five. Now, here is one of those moments I'll roll an ordinary dice. I'll get a one or a three if I'm lucky. We get the one. There you go. That corner's now fully upgraded. Roll the lucky dice. Get a lucky dice back. Roll our ordinary dice. Gets a three. And then this is where you ask the question, is it worth pushing? Now, most accounts I'd say, well, it's subjective. But on this account, material selection chests are pretty good. This is resources to improve my Celestial Island. I will take those. We like that. Now, is it worth a heavy gem investment? Mm, probably not. But then again, I have 126,000 gems, so I'm not really sweating when it comes to gem investments. So I guess I could consider it. It's also going to get me dust and promotion stones, spirit and gold. The dust is really, really valuable. So we'll do what we need to to try and get to 230. And after that, I'm calling it. So I think we'll just buy 15 dice and see what happens. And now that everything's level three, I think our option here is just smash. So we'll confirm the smash, move around, we use 16 dice, we get 50 of these stars, which takes us to 184. Nice. So I think at that point, we just keep going. I think we can still get to 230. Copium, maybe, but still, progress is possible. So we'll buy five, we'll smash with it. Moves pretty confidently around, get 20 extra stars. We're now at 204. So here's one of these moments where I now think we absolutely buy singles and try and go for the high roll. So we start off steady as we go. Five. Next. Five again. We take those. Two, one, four. Six. So what I think I do now is I look at dice for three. That takes me to 219. Ooh, I might actually need another ordinary dice here. So if I roll a god roll and get a five, this is done. I get a one. Ugh, that was not a god roll. That was the opposite of a god roll. A three. Right, so we need one more ordinary dice here. Six. Hit the mushroom card for double progress. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. So that's it. We're done. We nailed it. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. We're going to roll a six so we get some dust. That is actually the most valuable resource here for me. That's going to get us double points for passing there. We hit two, three, four, and we've got four dice left in the tank. That's a win. I will take that. That's going to get me a bunch of rewards. So we're going to claim that stuff in. And then we need to wait until the end of the event to cash in our childhood dreams. We'll use universal crystals to do it, and we'll get ourselves some star spawn cores. Let's do some Void campaigns. So this team is pretty solid. We're skipping Aspen. We don't need him. We're running a Golden Crown Asmodel the Dauntless. I still haven't managed to get him the Holy Damage Stone I want. I have HP Holy Damage. I want Holy Damage Skill Damage. We might swap this anyway. We might high roll, right? I got some more dust. Not a lot of dust. I got one spin. Oh! Is that better than HP Holy Damage? I think we go with the attack just for the damage potential. But in reality, skill damage would be better, given how inflated it is. So I think we just take the attack. And still wish we had skill damage, holy damage. But it's better than what we had before. That's given me 700,000 extra attack. That's actually pretty good. We were at 1.4, dead, like 1.40. Now we're at 1.47. So I'll take that. That's not that bad. My HP stat is already huge. So... Yeah, we're nearly 1.5 there. So what we need to do now, I'm going to go with damage over time as well, because we're using Elena, so that should work on Asmodel quite nice. Abelmax, pretty good. He's also wearing a golden crown. We've got ourselves Mystic Fairy Freya with a Demon Bell. We've got Holmes Young with a golden crown. And we're running Halora with a Demon Bell. Now, she was last time we did this wearing the new artifact, but since then, I've managed to get a really cool copy with 52 in speed, which means she's 2242 which is exactly two speed faster than Asmodel the Dauntless, who is 2240. So that is awesome. So yeah, happy with that. Definitely excited to see what progress this is going to get us. We've got half a million Stellar Shards here, so we're just going to sit on those. We're not actually going to use them. I do have 40 cores, though. So we could potentially get more Stellar Shards. We could squeeze out another level on Elena. It's whether that's worth it. A level on Elena 
or maybe just stockpile until we can finish Sword Flash. Trio Origin 5 Sword Flash seems good because that's going to be more stats for Alamac. Alamac's already pretty big. He's a 10 million attack, almost 11 million. But then again, Elena being better means more survival for Elena. Better sublimation on Elena. Better progress for the team. I think I'm going to invest in Elena. So what I'll do, we'll go ahead and open those cores. Let's see if we can get some stellar shots. Now, here's a question. Do you want me to do 40 in Fate and try and high roll? Or just go in Guidance? We did go in Guidance last time just for pure Copium. But you know what, guys? I'm feeling brave. And really, I just need Mockman and Vesa copies anyway for the Awakened Gala. So you want me to go in Fate? Chat is unanimously saying go in Fate. So let's see if we can high roll. Here we go, folks. Terrible start. Typical MK moment. We'll do the full M. Gets one sphere. Exactly average. Perfect. Right? If we can get a mega high roll, it pays out. Let's freaking go! It has taken me so long to get a win in Fate. To finally get a double bomb is actually amazing. So here we go. Final 10. Will we pull another one? Let's see it. Oh, there it is! Thank everything in this game for finally paying out. We are switching to Guidance. We're never going Fate again. Screw that stuff. That's the payout I've been looking for. We're locking it in. And I'm just going to take that. You could call that Copium, whatever you like. But you know what? We're ahead of the curve, finally. And we're going to stay ahead of the curve. Let's go. 1.7 million Stellar Shards now. Let's throw that all in on our lineup. Oh, yes, please. So, Phantom to Fire Elena. Let's make her way better by going and upgrading this tree. Yes, please. So, we go ahead. Quick upgrade that. Bang. Awesome. Throw in a 10 star. We got puppets. Loving the energy right now. Woo. Okay, what's this? 624? Is that even going to be enough for the next level? Will we get black and white upgraded? I don't know. I don't think we will. Not at all. Not even close. So that's our next project. So I got to strip down this Aspen. I'm so sorry, buddy, but I need it. You're just not doing it for me right now. Same thing with this Amon Ra. The only reason they're upgraded is they were tenants during Star Expedition. So I do not need this. So we'll take all that stuff off. That takes me to another 1.2 million Stellar Shards. It's Christmas, bro. Let's see if we can get Elena higher. Come on. Is this enough? Can we finally get Tree Rogen 4 on her? Oh, it's, it's just enough. Wow, that is huge. We're left with 100,000. Mate, this is so clean. Can we upgrade this? We absolutely can. We've managed to passively gain things over time, of course, because of all the rewards from Anniversary. Let's see. We've got a full basic here. So Pitch Black just got fully upgraded. Amazing. So we'll make this Noble. And then we'll go ahead and do exactly the same thing. So Elena's an absolute god in this final upgrade. But we're going to need Melon Chests to finish this. So I have one click here. That's fine. But I'm going to need, like, what, one Melon Chest on a passive? I can do that. I can do that, absolutely. So... I have this, which is a little bit there for the lemon. And I have this, which is a little bit there too. So that's that's perfect. That's passive two fully done. So we go here, do that. We go here again, do this. Then that's a fully upgraded passive two on Elena. Has to be. So we're winning. Perfect sublimation. Upgrade this three times. And she's clean. Absolutely beautiful. So the final thing we need now is Trickmaster upgraded. But I need more Stellar Shards to do that. So... That's a ways away. So what we do, we just hold down the button, quick upgrade her up. I run out of spirit. Wow. That's great. I actually like that we ran out of spirit because it means I can now justify going in here and buying some, which is perfectly fine by me. So we got ourselves 100 million. Don't even know if that's going to be enough. We'll find out. We got seven more levels to find. We cannot find them with that. So wow, I need to go to my other resources and I want to use this for dust. I don't want to use this for spirit. But I might have to use it. There is another option, which is I just go ahead and buy this stuff. I mean, we might as well. So we'll just go ahead and cash in here. Pretty heavy. So there's 1 billion gold. We just magically made spawn. Buy this. There you go. And let's level her up. And there you go. That is upgraded. Perfect. So we now have a much stronger Elena, which is really, really good. This is going to help us a ton. So let's go through this into Void Campaign. Let's see how we do. I'm very excited to see what this team's performance is going to be like. And here we are at Chapter 5-2. 
Now, just a quick caveat before we get started. A lot of you wonder, why don't I just push campaign all in one go? Am I missing out on resources? No, I'm not. Chapter four, once it's fully done, actually is the cap for resources at the moment. Chapter five doesn't actually give you anything except for a little bit more gold and a little bit more spirit and a little bit more XP. There's not really any benefit when it comes to the real juicy stuff, the stuff we really care about, all these things you see here, when you compare chapter four and chapter five. So it's fun just to take my time with it and see if we can beat it. So here we go, folks. We've got ourselves Stark Mist Holmes Young's core. We got Elena, we got Freya, we got Alamac, we got Halora, and we have our S tier Asmodel the Dauntless. That's a total of 530 million power. Let's send it. Now, this should be pretty easy, I'm hoping. So we start off, we get a stun there from Alamac's reaction, and you're gonna see we're gonna get lots of shields from Alamac. When he blocks, or when anyone in the team blocks, we gain shields on that person. Wow! Asmodel instant deleting that Delacium. Fantastic job. That was a round one active. That's bonkers. Are we going to see like some crazy energy feed here or something? Well, there's Phoenix. Oh, we will get energy feed because Freya and Halora are faster. Their demon bells will absolutely feed energy into Asmodel. Oh, this is brilliant. So Asmodel is going to get an active skill here. He's going to completely clear the wave with a Phoenix buff as well. There you go. Deleted. Those two demon bells putting in mad work. That's 221 billion damage double ticks double morax double wall deck this is gonna be pretty hard unless unless asmodel just you know doesn't active and, and kills them yep that's that's asmodel the dauntless for you folks <laughs> oh boy good job really good job he's such a fun hero and we should just see this get annihilated now we have so much protection. Having Elena higher as well is just so nice. Finally having Elena's passive black and white fully upgraded is, is just so much more protection. Oh, and there it is. He's, he's just next level. It's literally Asmodel, Unga Bunga Smack. Alamac gives us shields and every other hero on this team is support. And then Star Alchemist Holmes Jung is there just to shut down the problematic heroes on the enemy team. Really love it. Really, really love it. There you go. Already, Cthulhu has been marked by our Star Archivist Holmes Young there. Perceptual Disorder putting a big portal underneath him, shutting down his active skill, should he ever get the chance to do one. Ooh, Elena? You know what? She might just go here. Oh, and she just gains full shields. Well done, Alamac. Great job. Alamac doesn't active. We got a basic there from Asmodel the Dauntless. That's totally cool. Here's Phoenix. Game lags because there's tons of things for it to process. That's understandable. There's a lot of damage over time on this enemy wave. But we should get an active from Halora. Asmodel cleans the wave. Didn't even sweat. Look at that. 206 billion damage. Okay. Siahoos and Alamac. Let's see what happens. So they're all just going to punch Asmodel, which is great because when they hit him, they gain revenge stacks. They also feed him energy. That's why slot one Asmodel is being used here. So getting hit equals revenge stacks for the opponents and energy for us. It is a win-win, which means that round one active is able to do that much damage. <laughs> oh, oh man, that is, that is hilarious. They killed Asmodel. Siahu killed him. That actually might be our issue here. I might have to not run the greedy slot one build. Slot 1 Asmodel gets killed by Siahu. That said, though, we could have just so much sustain on this team that we delete them anyway. Because we still have Alamac as a main homeowner with over 10 million attack. So given that Asmodel has kind of softened this wave up, you know, quite a lot, we should still win here if we're lucky. We still have, like, all the Freya buffs, Halora buffs, Elena keeps us alive, Holmes Jung keeps us alive... Alamac keeps us alive. I mean, everyone keeps us alive. <laughs> this is a whole team of pure survival. They're even wearing golden crowns. Oh, there you go. We got a ton of damage over time on them as well. So they're already down to three men. They are not doing anything to Alamac. Oh my word. He just doesn't care. His shields are huge. The fact they scale with his HP as well. Oh. 
I thought Alamac died for a second then, but no, he was just jumping across the map to go ahead and hit the other Alamax. That's fine. There's Phoenix. Uh, are, are we okay here? Like, one active from Alamac might even just clean this. Because, like, they're low. They're really low health. Yeah, like, that Seer who's about to drop. For sure. We've got a ton of damage over time from Star Arkham's Tomes Jung if we're lucky. Right? He just needs to get that active off. Oh, he gets it. Oh, the damage is in. It is now just a 1v1 between Alamax. Elena's just a spectator here at this point. She's just like, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some moral support. Also, the chance to dodge is pretty clutch. Come on, Alamac. Big active. Shomu's boss. There it is. Chunking away. Come on, we win this. We win these. We win these. Oh, Elena with the dodge. Let's go. Yeah, we've got this. For sure. Like, Elena is gaining protection. Dodge plus Alamax shields from the block. It's too much. They can't beat us. And there it is. That was really cool. That even with Asmodel dead, Alamax pure sustain meant we were able to hold out against that wave. Now, that wouldn't normally happen against the majority of waves, but given how just clunky this enemy wave is and that they attack you in slot order, the fact Alamax was in slot 6, he just had so much time to just work and they couldn't get past Elena because of her dodging. So yeah, that was really cool. Now, this wave is going to be a problem. This is disgusting. We have... Transcendence Heroes with a Sherlock and more so the Halora I'm scared about. So we'll sit in and watch this one. I'm expecting this is going to take a few attempts because Halora is always a problem. If you guys are ever fighting campaign and it's a Halora wave and you're struggling, it's normal, right? Sometimes you'll need Golden Crown. Sometimes you'll need just Brute Force. But even if you crowd control a Halora, she will still use Queen's Guard. She is constantly putting pressure on your team just for you dealing damage to them. And we love the Sherlock basic. No, we hate the Sherlock basic. Screw the dove, right? Hopefully we don't get wrecked by it. There's an active skill from Asma. Oh, wow. Wow. I, it's, it's almost like Transcendence Heroes are weaker in campaign. Like, he just one shot that. That's, that's a good time. That's a good time instant dead just annihilated the wave that's a basic attack eos is gone sherlock is the last man standing and he didn't even eat part two of asmodel's active wild absolutely wild now if we want to get really silly with this instead of using star alchemist holmes young's call we can use Asmodel's because I went ahead and built Asmodel's core to two star. And then given the fact I have four noble cores, I can get plus four on this to make it a level six core, which means we have tons of holy damage for the team. We've got revenge stacks giving us all damage dealt reduction for enemies, which is really funny. And on top of that, Every time an ally releases a basic attack or active skill, the Heavenly Chariot is going to pursue the target, dealing 640% of damage. So, if we just want to go Unga Bunga, we could try Asmodel's Core. So, this could be funny. Like, super funny. You'll see every active skill our team does, just Asmodel, it'll look like he's getting a free hit in like he's a Garuda. So, get ready for this one, folks. This could get pretty silly. Also, we're going to debuff the opponents and buff our team, which is fun. So there's the chariot. You see that? Halora, bang, the chariot comes out. Then Asmodel comes out. Like, I don't even know how good this core actually is, but it's definitely going to lag the screen out because <laughs> every active skill equals the chariot. So Alamax got an active here. We're still getting Perceptual Disorder on enemies as well. Which is funny. Asmodel gets a basic. Ugh, he's dead. Right, yeah, okay. As silly as the Asmodel core is, I, I don't think it's our best choice. And we're going to try Alamax core here to see how much that's going to help. Now, this is me assuming the Home Jungs have the highest attack. Let's see if that's the case. So we're watching for taunt on the Home Jungs. Okay, we didn't get any taunt at all. So, um, 
it's probably not worth it. We might just want to go with Star Alchemist Holmes Young here. And then just lock that one in. Or, I also need to remove Asmodel from slot one. Because as soon as Seer Who does an active, we're going to get wrecked. And do I have damage over time Purify on? I do, yes. I think it's the Seer Who active that's going to be an issue. Wow, look at that dove. Insane. So yeah, as soon as the Seer Who's do actives, I think that's Asmodel deleted. Because Seer Who's single target, really strong. That actually was pretty good. Um, we tanked that one. We tanked that one as well. Wow, we tanked these. Wow, we, we, we really do tank these. Nice. Not expecting that. That's really good. Right, okay. If we get another active skill from Asmodel, we're going to be beautiful here. Oh, the deaths as well is fantastic. So, oh yeah. Come on, Asmo. You clean this up, surely. This is perfectly set up for you. This is your win if there ever was an opportunity to win. Like, this is cleanup crew. The whole wave's dead. Yep. That is so satisfying. Now we've just got one Seer who that got stunned, and he's going home. He has to be. Oh, there it is. Super duper clean. 234 billion damage. Wiped that wave like it was a smear on my toilet seat. Gone. There's Alamax active. And, oh, Asmodel already getting one kill on the Forkus is there. Forkus is so squishy. <laughs> uh, like, watching this, you're probably like, wait, wait, this is this looks easy. Uh, I mean, when you've got a team built up like this, I mean, Homeowner Alamac gives you infinite survival. And in Asmodel, when he's an S tier, he doesn't even need to be an S tier. He can just be any Asmodel with Giant Killer and a decent amount of tenants. Can just clean up real hard. And Treasure Train definitely helps. Remember, I've got a really juicy Treasure Train, so I've got, like, extra raw damage dealt for Transcendence Heroes, extra stats. Like, I think I'm getting one and a half million attack just from Treasure Train. Really, really nice. And that's not on top of all the scaling bonuses that I'm getting from my Awakened stats as well. So, that's probably getting me another half a million, maybe a million there. So, yeah, it's good. And is Asmo's core similar to the Queen's Guard stuff? Uh, in that it applies a little bit of damage pressure, sure it is, but it's, like, not amazing. At least not against these enemies because they have such inflated stats that I don't think Asmo's core really is doing much. The main thing it does is debuff their all damage dealt and improve our holy damage. That's the nice part about it. But really, like, Asmo just gets all his stuff from the revenge stacks and huge active skills like that. So the main thing is just keeping the team alive and keeping Asmodel alive so that he can apply revenge to opponents and then eventually nuke them. And as I've mentioned before in videos, but I'll say it again for today if you're a new viewer, those little yellow shields you can see on Halora and Elena, that's given to them by Asmodel, which gives them a ton of protection. And then on top of that, if they get hit whilst that shield's there, that's more revenge on the opponents. So Asmo loves it when the whole team gets hit and the whole team can survive. And he protects the lowest, so he gives your team more defense whilst also being an offensive powerhouse. So he's a really good support as well. If you guys are looking for a little hero to stick on the side, he's able to protect your lowest HP. And also his active skill debuffs the speed of opponents. So if speed is ever an issue, Asmo can actually help there as well. Not to mention, as you can see here, when you slap a giant killer stone on him that you get from an Awaken, he absolutely wrecks. So, giant killer's a good time. And is it hard to make him work well? Only as hard as it is to make any giant killer hero work well. The difficulty is getting an A-minus of that hero. But he is the cheaper of all the A-minus heroes that do really well in campaign, so it's not a major issue compared to others, right? You can try for a Mockman. Mockman's good. But um, the one thing Asmo has that Mockman doesn't is survivability. Asmodel is a chunky boy. Mockman is a glass cannon. So it's different play styles, different strategies. And I love at the moment the defensive style towards idle heroes, mainly because we have heroes like Alomac that play into that. Halora, Freya, Elena, giving us so much survival. And then we've got the Star Alchemist Holmes Jung here to perceptually disorder enemies with nasty active skills, because that's the only way we're going to be able to punish these opponents if they go ahead and actually start killing our team. And that's what Star Alchemist Holmes Jung's core does. If an opponent dies, we have a chance to put perceptual disorder on that opposing team. But also that synergizes with Asmodel as well, because when someone on your team dies, you actually get a buff for Asmodel because he's throwing out revenge to opponents and then getting buffed himself. So he gains offensive stats. Just go ahead and read Asmodel's passives. They're really cool. And um, yeah. And yeah, you can use a B tier on DTV as well. If you want to use a Vulcan, same strategy works. You don't need a giant killer, but you just need, you know, inflated stuff like an inflated house and things. 
Have um have B tier Vulcans cleared chapter five? I wouldn't be surprised if someone's managed to do it, right? With a big train and you know, a slice steel island homes, right? Homes are really what makes the difference. If you've got like let's say two and a half max homes, you're in a good spot. Uh this team's clean. Yeah, it is, it's really satisfying. Um and I just just playing towards Asmodel's strengths. That's why um wow, was that that was that was Amon Ra. That was healing curse from Amon Ra that killed us there. That was that was hilarious. That was really hilarious. Speak of DTV. Oh, Vulcan's doing nothing here. It was that was that was all Amon Ra. I am shocked by that. So we, we can't beat this. There's no way. Amon Ra is just gonna punish our healing. Even if we try. Actually, we might beat this. Just because of the dumb fact that we've seen it before, once Asmodel softened up opponents, it just kind of means that all the hard parts are done. Like, the HP is lower on these guys. If we can just apply enough pressure, we could still win. <laughs> oh my word. We, we might still win. I don't think they have enough. The only hero that breaks us now is Vulcan. If he gets his analysis off. <gasps> Yo, Vulcan's gonna die. Unless that's active's the one, it isn't. Oh, this Vulcan's too squishy. He's got nothing. He's dead. Yeah, he's gone. So Asmodel's set up for this. And then the rest of the team just cleans up. It happened again. That is absolutely hilarious. So what it takes is one big active skill from Asbo and the rest of the team are like, we got you, bro. Thanks for the layup. Alamac putting in work, man. Secondary damage dealer with the survival as well. You'll love to see it. And so tanky. Yeah, Alamac is kind of broken. Like, really, really, really overpowered. And uh, yeah, pretty good. So that's uh, another stage of chapter five completed. Don't want to overly do that because now we've just had reset. So that means it's finally time to go and do the force rival, which is something I've kind of been looking forward to because day one is always the best day because we can actually go ahead and fight without people banning warriors. So I'm going to go put a team together for this and we'll see what happens. Let's go see what this team can do. It is just pure energy feed. Asmodel with an Atlas game. <laughs> if anything was as dumb as possible, this is that, right? This is so stupid. So we're going to go in and we're going to fight and let's see what happens in the rival fights. So where are we? What team are we on? Are we bottom corner here? We are with all these crystals. So who are our neighbors that we need to fight? Well, we've got orange. All right, let's go see how the top competitors are doing and what team they're on. <laughs> That's probably an informative start. We got red, lots of blue, red, purple. Uh, Jesus is on orange. Oh no. Does that mean... Oh, Ragnaru's on orange as well. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not good. That's, that's, yeah, there's a few on orange. Hmm. There's a few on purple as well. Who are our other neighbors? Is it red? It, it's red. I think we attack red. Yes. <laughs> Let's attack red. Okay. What? They've banned warriors already? It's been five minutes! It's okay, you one's red. Okay, Noah, it was you. You banned warriors. Screw you, Noah. Have green banned warriors? No, they haven't. So let's go fight this. Uh, wait, what you mean? What do you mean? What do you Are you broken? What do you mean minus 1000? Right, let me let me log off and log back in. Server status code 1013. You know what? I think that tells you everything. When the devs have realized there's actually 1,013 potential problems with this game. Right, now let's go and find out why I lost that uh, particular interaction in Force War. Did they ban warriors? Oh, they did! What an absolute bozo behavior. Oh, and they've put a shield up? I just want to play the game, guys! I just want to have some fun! This entire game mode is an opportunity for brilliance and competition. And they're like, I know what, let's ban classes. And then the dumb freaking designers of this game were like, okay, let's ban classes. And then let's make all the damage dealer heroes all the same class. Alamark and Vulcan. I will make Mockman. And then we'll be Aspen and uh, Asmodel the Dauntless. 
And then, oh, I know, we'll release Geister. If you want a hero to be relevant, maybe don't just have a mechanic where we can ban an entire class. Just because, look, no one's building Geister for Force War. Right? And Vessa? Oh, get lost. Right? If you've got a freaking smug face because you've got a giant killer Vessa, no one asked. Lexi loves Force War? Well, yeah, because Lexi's got a triple S sword flash. So Assassin doesn't get banned. You know, let's just alienate an entire group of the community. Mockmen users, Asmodel users, Vulcan users. Let's go play some campaign again. Let's put some golden crowns back on the team. Right, there we go. Everyone's got golden crown back on them. And now I'm just going to go and play a game mode that doesn't ban the hero I want to use. Right, Valkyrie, time for you to get absolutely dicked. Here we go. Three Valkyries, three Holmes Youngs. Valkyrie's doing nothing. Because I ain't really bringing that much crowd control to this. Apart from maybe the occasional Alamax stun. So we should just kill these Star Archivist Holmes Youngs. They're not even Star Archivist Holmes Youngs. They're trend using steroid boys not even cool weak source stupid doving terrible poisoning stupid heroes but at least they don't ban warriors so that's nice right go on asmodel show them who's boss ah that that was that was not an massive amount of damage we have got some perceptual disorder out there oh this 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 wave might might be um hmm this might be an issue. Oh, oh, Valkyrie. That was, that was a nasty hit. He's dead. Well, this wave's um, uh, going to take a few attempts. Valkyrie's fun. Fun, fun, interactive hero. With the damage over time from Holmes Jung and the burn from Valkyrie. I, I think we're going to have a lovely time. This wave's brutal. Yeah, clearly. Star Archivist Holmes Young just died. Ha! Ha, Valkyrie! Eat that! Get deaded! Yeah! Asmodel! Excellent job. Right, do it again. That was really good. Just the, the same, but better. Unless we all just die now at the end of the round. Oh, oh, we are going to. Look at all those damage over time stacks. That's 15 on Asmodel, and then he instant falls over. We don't like those. We don't win those. Let's do this. Let's go full smack. Full send, right? What could possibly go wrong? We'll, we'll even go Gilded Purple Fan for the damage dealt. Why not? Why not? We'll be we'll be great. We'll be great. Look, balance strike. It's it's already going to be great. Or we could even just remove damage reduction and go full Unga Bunga. Like we'd be like, yeah, we're, we're going to be great. We'll just run. I don't know. Uh, what's what, what are the cool kids using these days? Holy damage. Yeah, thirty percent holy damage. Clears the whole wave in one shot. Or or dies. You know. Let's find out. Let's see if Asmodel just ends up dead. He might not. We might just get tons of buffs here, if we're lucky. Gilded Purple fans' protection could be really good. Oof, that was a nasty hit. Although they're on purposely avoiding Asmodel. I like this. They know we've made him squishier, so they're like, oh, okay, we'll give you a break. But annoyingly, them avoiding him is kind of problematic because it means revenge stacks aren't going out. But then again, if they're hitting the other heroes, that's fine. Oh my word. Here we go. Whoa! Look at those big boy numbers! Yeah! Wow! Right, it's winnable. It's winnable. Mmm, it's so winnable. Right, I'm gonna be really, 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 really stupid. I'm gonna put melodic strings on Asmodel. Right, Asmo, hold up. You got this. You the G. What the heck was that damage from Holmes then? Oh my word. No, stop. Stop. Okay, dodge. Dodge again. Dodge Valkyrie's attack again. We got this. Yes, good. Hold. Don't kill Halora. Oh my word, Star Archivist Holmes Jung died. That's not even a bad thing. Actives, they're coming out. Let's go. Is this the one? Oh, the send was huge, but it wasn't enough. Oh, I don't know how we kill this wave. Oh. What a bell end.
Can we try Balance Strike and Crown again? Sure. Screw Melodic Strings. It's for wussies. We're going to run Balance Strike instead. And we're going to full send. We're going to clear this like kings. Right. Go. Try Torch. It... <sighs> no. Okay. Steady. Live here, Asmo. You got this. Yep, actives. Into more actives. Oh! This is it! It's got me! It's the one! No, Asmo's dead! It's just, it's just the homes! It's just the homes! It's just the homes! It's just the homes! It's gotta be winnable! What is he gonna do? We kill him! We win these! We win these! We win these! We Yes! Perceptual disorder! Yes! We win these! We win these! Come on! How, how is he still alive? It, like, it's round five. Just just kill him. And, and it's back. Perceptual disorder. Come on. Just end it. Stop. No, he healed. Nah, 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 nah. You dead, bro. You dead. Valkyries fell over like they were made of toilet paper. Asmodel, you absolute sexy champion. Folks, this is the VIP series. That's three dead Valkyries and three dead Holmes Youngs. Eat that, you crappy, broken, stupid, degenerate heroes. Well done, team. Here's the lineup one more time. We got Demon Bell Freya. We got Crown on Holmes Young. We got the, the Jara that's a tenant. We got Halora with Demon Bell. We got Elena with a crown. And then the big boys themselves. Crown, Asmodel the Dauntless. Attack, attack, holy damage. With holy damage here, crit damage here, armor break there. All the Unga Bunga smack with Balance Strike. That's right. Unbending will for sissies. Just don't get hit. Easy peasy. And then we have ourselves. Look at that. Golden Crown, Alamac. Attack HP. 10 million attack. Folks, subscribe for more. We're going to beat more of this campaign. But for now, it's good night. Have a great week. And happy idling. Happy idling.